Wait, what? I thought I clicked join. Oh, I did click join. Okay. Wasting no time. It's early morning. It's 8.25 a.m. in the U.S., Midwest. And we're beginning the day berserking. Uh, I've late joined the hourly blitz arena about half hour late. Let's play this line. D4. Maybe I'll play like a true scotch. Welcome back to people. Play knight b3. Yeah, usually the bishop goes to b6. Play g4 here. Hola. Hola to suds. How's it going? Okay, I'm playing pretty aggressively to start out this game. I did drop a pawn. F4. Bishop h4, king d2. Oops. There goes my castling rights. Good to see a lot of people back. I streamed very briefly last night for maybe like 45 minutes. But today will be maybe a slightly longer stream. Welcome to Venji Vine. Welcome to Nice Fork. Have to be careful of like D5 or D6. There's a funny line where I sack my queen, which is not happening. Okay, but I do win the knight. Pawn's pinned. If you want to join the tournament, yeah, it's um, you go to play in tournaments, arena tournaments, and find the hourly blitz arena. Okay, what to do? Um, don't really want to trade queens. Rook g2 defending. Okay, maybe we are trading queens. Yeah, it is 3-0, so no increment. Rating points are on the line. I should have probably taken the pawn first. Okay. Good morning, Eric. I was sad to miss you in Munich. I left the day after you arrived. Oh, no. I'm sure I'll return someday to Munich. It was a nice city. Let's play... Let's play D4. Welcome back from your European tour. Thank you. I'm still a bit jet lagged. Like normally I'm not awake at this time, but I guess it's not a bad time to be awake. Okay, I do have 19 seconds left, but I'm up three minor pieces for two pawns. Hey, it's Samsonite, gifting two. Yeah, welcome back to Bomandino as well. Yeah, maid is coming very soon. Oh, it's the purple king. Oh. I don't know if people caught that. It was it was a very short-lived purple king. But I pre-moved on top of the king. And then it, it glowed purple for a brief moment. Good to have you back. What was your fave place on the Europe trip? Oh, it's good to be back. There are a lot of nice places. Like every place I went was probably competing for for my spot as as a favorite place. Um I really like northern Italy. I hiked in the the Dolomites. The Dolomites or Dolomites? Okay, I'm not going to berserk this game. Saw a lot of cows. And Germany was nice. Switzerland was really nice, too. At some point, I'll, I'll have a lot of photos to share. It's still going through like all the photos I took on the trip. Thank you, Christine HB. Gifting to the green monster. Um, yeah, we'll start with H6. So I had this exact position in a tournament game in 
Switzerland in Biel. And we followed some similar path. Yeah, rook c8 is uh, the novelty move. And here, I could play b5 immediately, I think. I could also take and play b5. Might as well take and play b5. And the reason for rook c8, I'm preemptively defending the c pawn. So knight moves, I don't have to spend another tempo defending. I'll take here first. I may have had this exact position in Beal. Maybe I'll have to check afterwards. Uh, the idea... The idea is to put the knight on c4. Have a nice outpost. Queen f5. I have knight f6. Queen is a little bit annoying here. I think it's okay. I have G no no G6. Knight G6. Let's play this. But then takes. Okay, so I'm throwing knight d2. If I take this way, there's b5. So I think I'll take this way. Welcome back to Camerdale. Thick as frick. Syncopede. I've missed your streaming, Eric. You always brighten my day. Oh, I've missed your subbing. Welcome back. Yeah, I'll be streaming more consistently in the coming, coming days and weeks. All right, so this is a very pleasant rook ending because I'm going to take over the A file. And then I'll have an active rook versus passive rook. Um, still takes some technique though. So rook a4. Glad you're back. Yeah, again, it's good to be back. Welcome back, Chai Town dude. So I'm winning a pawn. I have a defended pass pawn. Controlling e4. I could play g5. I'll save g5 for later. Activating further. I assume this is winning. Takes, takes here. My king will come in. Yeah, hyperactive king. Maybe this is the best. I mean, both moves should be winning, but I like this move. So I'm pretty much guaranteed to win the b-pawn. Because white will eventually run out of moves like g3, king c4. Thank you, Ordinary Otter and QTC. Okay, that was um, that was actually a pretty smooth game. Very positional. It stemmed from this opening prep, this QGD, like solid position. Rook c8 is a, a move I discovered a few months ago that was actually... I talk about it in my recap video. I think it was round three recap from Beale. In Rosen, let's go. Where... Um, Basically, I discovered this move because I was trying to improve on my game against Magnus Carlsen. Because Magnus crushed me in that line where I think I played Queen B instead of Rook C8. Oh yeah, Chess King knows. Queen B8 used to be my go-to move. But Rook C8, I think, is just um, a better approach. All right. Um, I don't know why, but I'm playing the Dutch. <laughs> Let's mix it up a little bit. I'm taking a break from the, the standard queen's pawn. Okay, threatening the fork tactic. Yeah, this is one of probably the most common opening traps in the Dutch. If the opponent tries to go for a London setup, it uh, definitely backfires. I think you right cloak and cow shield. Okay. 
I have um, an incentive. If I win this tournament, I'm going to share a photo of a cow. Maybe I'll even play the cow opening at some point. So I saw a lot of cows in Italy. And for the most part, they were pretty photogenic. I do have to watch my time here. Moo. Moo. Hey, it's Vampire Chicken. I didn't see too many chickens in Italy. Or vampires, thankfully. Shout out to Vampire Chicken. We still have the Jonathan command. Hopefully everyone is following Jonathan everywhere. Good to see you. What do I want to do? Okay, c6 would blunder knight c7. Probably a good idea to trade when I'm up material. And now bishop. I want to sack. Maybe rook b8 first. The bishop wants to get to the long diagonal. And then future ideas of checkmating somehow. Maybe like h6, g5. Yeah, so this is a counterattack. Queen d2 will likely come. And then the knight needs to find a square. Probably back to f7. Or, e, or d7. Or do I play b6? b6 first. I stopped using the Evla. Bar, I stopped using the engine when analyzing because of Vampire Kaiken commentaries. Now I can enjoy Grand Master games. Hey. Yeah, sometimes the absence of the engine can increase enjoyment and appreciation for high level chess. No, everyone has different preferences, though. Okay, so I hit the bishop. I unleash the queen. The queen does defend e3 from a distance. We might see bishop e7. Yeah. Queen is being blocked temporarily. The rook is actually maybe more useful on g8. Because there is x-ray vision. Like maybe potential for g5. The knight's finding a new home. Very soon. Uh, yeah, 94. Okay, it's turning into a bullet game. I'm up on time for the first time in the history of time. Am I losing a pawn, though? This looks pretty poisonous. That looks pretty delicious. Oh, I missed uh, I missed Queen E4 with a double attack. Now the pawn's defended. Okay, it's still working out. If my rook didn't exist, Bishop F6 would be checkmate. But thankfully, my rook existed. And this doesn't work, because then the queen would defend. OK, um, clean game. Got a Dutch win. So I played three games so far. I guess I'm still trying to win the tournament. I'm barely within the top 100. Uh, so I might as well like keep berserking and play aggressively. Maybe let's play. Let's try. Uh, never mind. Um, I wanted to try an ortho schnapp. Or not an ortho schnapp. Um, Glad to see I forget the back. name. Also happy 18 months to me. Happy 18. Okay, this looks really good. I feel like I'm playing someone who watched a Jonathan video and got inspired to play the elephant gambit but maybe only saw the thumbnail and didn't see how to actually play it. Also, how do I maximize punishment? Maybe this move. 
I have to marinate the pawn before I capture the pawn. The pawn is marinating in all of my attacks. Queen e7. I'm thinking queen e7, knight c3. Maybe I just take though. And then knight c3. I want to castle queenside. Bishop g7, I can play f4. Now I can no longer legally castle. I have knight d5. I do have to be careful of a pawn promoting. But black has to be careful of the queen being captured. If the queen moves off this diagonal, I have queen h4. Which is almost gg. But not quite. Bishop e7. Not seeing the win. I have bishop g8, funny move. Maybe I just castle. I have 28 seconds to figure this out. Oh, what is this position? Welcome back. I was starting to have rows and withdrawals. Oh no. I was having Twitch chat withdrawals. Okay, let's just stack up on the the file. My threatening rookie eight. Yeah, it's like maiden four. One. Two. Three. Please let me count to four. Please. Four. Okay, I can count to four. Hey, I gained a rating point. That was a weird game. That was a fun game, though. T taking down the elephant. In many places, you get arrested for that. But All right, let's berserk again. Go back to my main d5 opening. Okay, so we have a London. This is a, a dubious move order for white because of c4. I mean, black is already maybe slightly for choice. It's still very playable for white. Are you still in Germany? Um, nine. Or as they would say um, in not Germany, no. I'm back in the, I'm back in my motherland of America. Okay, so I'm doing all the like typical positional moves. E4 might be coming. I don't think I want to take. And this is very typical to target the pawn. Rook B1 is off limits due to the bishop. And the plan is to play Rook A5 to B5. Always play off six. Wow. Yeah, this knight walked into the wrong square. Where were you born exactly? Um, I, I don't remember the exact GPS coordinates. I can try and get back to you on that. Although the first, um, the first day I was in Europe, I arrived in Switzerland, and I took a picture in the like the town that I was staying in, and there weren't like too many identifying features of the picture, but I posted it to social media, telling people to guess where I was, and then people like found the exact GPS coordinates of where I was, which was both impressive but also kind of scary. Probably more impressive, though. All right, so making progress. Hey, it's Hannah. What's up, Hannah? Shout out to Hannah. 
Han er sas. Doi! I meant to play rook f8. I don't know how I mouse slipped rook c8. I haven't used this mouse in a while. It has like different sensitivity. I have to get used to it. I mean, white could have taken and then won the pawn, but okay, life is good now. It's only open file. Very close to mating. But how? I think what I'll do, I'm going to walk the king to h6, defend the pawn. White can't do anything here. And then once the pawn's defended, my rooks can improve themselves. Yeah, this rook is completely stuck. Although it's not trapped, because if I attack it, it has a g4 square. I guess I could trap it with a bishop, but I'm more interested in trapping the king. Yeah, I don't think I like my chances of winning this tournament. Unless I win like five games in a row in the next like 10 minutes. Not taking the rook. Mate is more valuable. Oh, there's almost on passant mate, but um, that would have been on passant check what to do. Okay, 20th place. So I need to win four more games. Four more wins would get to 40 points, but and there's a grandmaster who has a lot of time left. All right, so Berserk. So I'm just trying to win games every two minutes, I guess. We have a fun London line. Knight b5 and queen g3. And queen f4. Oh, yay, it is Eric. Yay, it's a fork. Um, Take, take. It's actually a little bit tricky here. Take there, there, there. I have to play king e2. Could take on c8. I have to go for this. Ooh. I think it's still okay. 94 and f3. It just looks scary. Yeah, I'm losing something. Queen c7. Let's just do this first. What is this opening? I have this move. Queen is trying to rescue the knight. So I'm up the exchange. Very confusing position. Probably want to play knight of seven ninety five. Twenty three seconds. Oh no. You're my biggest fan. I'm in I'm in very big trouble here. I'm losing a piece. Wow. I'm just losing what to do. Black's going to have two queens and a huge time advantage. Oh, 
Oh no, my king. That's not helping. This is really not helping. <laughs> what a crazy game, though. I wonder if that was even good for me, this line. It looked really good. It seemed like maybe I was on the verge of um of winning. Good morning, everyone. But knight f seven was a plunder because of this. Queen f seven best move. So what is this line? Take take. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, because I free the f one square. So queen c3 is no longer an issue in this line, and I win the rook. Okay. Yeah, I would have had to see a few moves there. Okay, life goes on. Thank you, Manitoba Mark. Good morning. So I'm not winning this tournament. I'm probably not even getting close. No berserking. Let's um let's have like a decent quality game. Maybe you got a Stafford Gambit. Okay, we have this line again. And when I say again, I mean I had this line last night. Cause last night I streamed for about 45 minutes. I played two games. But we're going into something a little bit different. Take the bishop. Okay, this might be some theory. We take the pawn. I'm not sure if we need to is theory. Because now white's going to have to work to win back the pawn. And I'm not going to give it away too easily. I think f5 may be coming. Yeah, the game I played last night in the Petrov, it was against a, a 1600, and I almost lost in like first 20 moves. My king walked all the way up the board. Thank you to Sutanki, gifting to Torka. I think after this tournament, I'll play another tournament and try and redeem myself. Is this tournament I late joined? I mean, overall, it's, there's been some fun games, though. Okay, this position is very enjoyable. I can take. Although, take, take. Maybe take in bishop c4. Then queen e3. Okay, I'll play bishop c4, queen e3, queen h5. And then lift the rook. And queen g3 is coming. Not so simple. Like, I want to do things, but things are kind of hard to do. Maybe this move first. I'm giving away the A pawn. Hmm. Giving away the F-pawn. Wow. So much tension. Okay. I mean, this is a nice, uh, nice pawn structure. The king is a little bit airy. 
And this is the only open file, so it makes sense to put a rook on that file. A5. This might just require some patience. Queen c5 would hit both pawns. How to do this? Yeah, this move. Writing e3. Now threatening f4. I don't think white has perpetual. Although, I was white going for more than perpetual. Check first. Okay, now my king is pretty safe. Still up a pawn, except I'm losing this pawn. But my existing pawns look pretty immaculate. The biggest issue is my time. Connect five potential. Maybe. Just you wait for it. Oops. Very low on time. Rook B2, D3. Okay, no no connect five. We got close though. Got very close. Just needed to advance the pawns. I was dreaming of like connect five to trap the rook on the third rank. But uh I had to had to just do the dirty work there. Thank you, Wizard. The first time sub. And Matt Burr for the twenty two months. Okay, so I finished the tournament barely over 2,600. Congratulations to this Grandmaster from Kazakhstan. Winning the tournament? Okay, now what to do? I can stream for about another hour, I think. Let me see. Yeah, I have like an hour to uh, keep streaming, so I'm open to suggestions. Another arena, please. Okay, your your command is my wish. Arena tournaments. So these are both. Maybe I'll play five zero. Have a little bit more time to explain things and not get Big too low on time. Hi everyone, and hi Eric. PLS, can you say hi to my partner, Melissa, who started playing chess recently? Oh, nice. Hi to Melissa. And hi to Mike Elders. Thanks for subbing for 30 months. Oh, strong candidate master from Norway. Will likely play first round. Oh, this person is in the chat. Hello to Booby Liang. Sorry if I butchered your name. Maybe you can get revenge very soon. Alekin, please. Okay, if I'm black, I'll I'll pre-move knight f6. Nine, eight, seven, six, if I'm white, five, four, I'll three, play knight f3 and we'll have um of Alekin up a tempo. Okay, knight f6 is pre-moved. Hey, we have an Alekin. 
in d5 as a principled move. Please play d4. Please play d4. Yes. Okay, we're going to have a fun opening. Hee hee hee. Okay. This is a one of the few openings in chess where there's four queens on the board by move seven. Doesn't happen too often. Uh, bishop g4. I don't know any theory here, which is maybe a little bit concerning. Bishop f5 actually is more centralizing. I do have a plan of making a third queen. I have a pass a pawn. My d7. I have to be very careful of my bishop. My c2 is attacked. There's another move I should have considered there, but consider it for future positions. Okay, so if I take, I mean, how to do this? Let's start with the check. It forces bishop e3, so I'm not actually winning the bishop, but I gain a little bit of time. And maybe now, do I want to allow knight g5? It's tempting to play a5. Maybe c6. To activate the other queen. This position takes so much more mental energy because there's so many queen moves and so many queens. Overall, I think I'm happy though. I have a uh, have good harmony, ready to castle queenside, maybe trap a queen. At some point, white might have to play this move. Wow. Ambitious. Take, take. Hmm. H6. H6, H5. It's playable. H5, I take the bishop. I could sack a queen. I could sack two queens. Double oh no my queen. I'm calculating uh, here it takes and then take on g5 and probably not worth it though. So queen f5. I mean, queen g7 is like the boring move, which is maybe the best move. Missed you. I Where missed you too. Are you? I'm on earth. Uh, what to do? Queen f5, knight h7. I think this is the way to go. Because I didn't want to lose up the each pawn. Now the no, queen, queen f five. Position's still so weird. Maybe I just leave the king in the center and start pushing. White's also pushing. Down a little bit of time. These pawns are not to be admired. Have to take. H6, I... H6, I take on d4, perhaps. 
There's also bishop h8. It's also this move. I might regret this. Okay, so the rook's ready to come in. Might as well start pushing my pass pawn. Knight's pinned. Now it's no longer pinned. Hmm. Really not sure about this. I guess we're trading down into some ending where Maybe in the very end, I'm up a pawn. Calculating takes, 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 takes. Rook a5 takes, takes. Oh, wow. I didn't see that coming. I have to play this. But I have knight, I have this move. I think was missed. If I didn't have this move, maybe I'd be in trouble. I guess I also have this move. Okay, so I can take and hit the bishop. I don't have queen h2. Hmm. Am I losing the pawn? I don't like the way I'm playing this. Or do I? Hi, Eric. Happy to see you. Happy to hear you. Okay, so a lot of like cat and mouse. I think I'm getting into the square though. And rook a3 is a move. Take a. Oh no, the knight's defended though. So rook a8 will not win the knight. So this turned out to be a very useful move. Yeah, there used to be four queens. This is the last survivor. Still have to watch my time. I guess these are also survivors. Uh, let's not repeat. Getting closer. Good try. Good try. Okay. <laughs> A fitting ending. I promoted, what, twice this game. Once on the final move, first OTB tournament is in two weeks. and once on move seven, Do you have tips? or move six. Thank you. Love your content. Oh, thank you, wizard. 
Um, let, let me just reflect on this game first. It's a very eventful game. <laughs> Doesn't happen too often. I wonder how many games have gone down this line. No games in the Masters database. We chess database. There's been almost a thousand. That's a very funny line. Engine says it's close to equal here. Okay. So what was the question? Tips for, oh, tips for an over the board tournament. Oh, your first over the board tournament. Um, the most important thing is to have fun. Like try and enjoy yourself as much as possible. Play to learn rather than to like be, be stressed about trying to win every game. And sometimes when you're relaxed and calm, it, it can bring out your best chess. Okay, I'm playing an Italian in honor of the country I was just in. I think another piece of advice, and I, this is usually my go-to piece of advice, is leading up to a tournament, you want to focus on the non-chess factors that can influence your chess. So what I mean by that is like sleep, diet, exercise, because there's only so much you can learn or improve on in, in a week or two before an event. But if you try and optimize your physical and mental form, that can sometimes make the biggest difference. Just want to try and be as focused as possible. But if it's your first over the board tournament, like maybe try and get some practice playing over the board. Try and uh, simulate the tournament conditions, like take notation, use a chess clock. I know a lot of people these days are used to just playing online. So moving physical pieces, is uh, a slightly different experience. Okay, I'm going to be aggressive here, going for maximal pressure. Hey, it's Singapore backhand. From California. Good morning. Hope California is treating you well. I really want to sack something. You don't play like f4 f4 is interesting so the reason why i played king h1 a few moves ago was to ensure the, the f pawn wasn't pinned and now the rook wants to get involved f7 is one of the biggest targets here yeah don't pre-move over the board <laughs> It's good to know some etiquette, too. Um, like, touch, move, like, know the over-the-board rules that maybe don't, don't exist in online chess. Like, touch, move is probably one of the biggest ones. Knowing how to offer a draw. Um, if you want to offer a draw in over the board chess, the proper way to do it is to make your move, offer a draw, and then hit the clock. Because I've seen people like offer a draw on their own time, which then the opponent can just kind of wait and think. Bishop f5, wow. So it's a pretty clear idea. I think I take on F7. Because I don't see an immediate defense for black. The point is after rook takes F7, I take on E5. And now there's no bishop G6. Oh, is there a bishop G6? I spoke too soon. There might be bishop g6. Oops. I'm in trouble. 
Well, I saw this position from a distance. I thought, oh, free bishop. We'll see my what my opponent wants to do, though. Oh, I also missed that move. Okay, let's just keep sacking. Sacrifice everything and hope it's checkmate. Probably not the best strategy in chess, but maybe it will work out. So now at least I'm connecting the rooks and not getting mated. What was the most recent photo you took? Um, I tweeted it. At least one of the most recent photos was of our family dog. Uh, exclam Twitter. Hopefully the link still works. Welcome back to David Rabubu. Any other tips apart from sack everything and hope it's checkmate? Generally, it's good to think on your opponent's time rather than getting sidetracked of random thoughts or Twitch chat messages. Um, like in serious tournaments, when I'm yeah, when I'm competing in classical chess, I I do try and like make use of my opponent's time. Like when they're thinking, I try and anticipate what they're going to do ask myself relevant questions of the position, like what are the weaknesses, what are the pieces that can be improved, what are the potential threats for both sides. It's good to constantly be looking at the position from like, different perspectives and yeah, try and, uh, try and absorb yourself in it as much as possible. Do you go for a walk around the playing hall sometimes on your opponent's time? I do. Most of the time, it's usually when I'm in opening preparation and I have nothing really to, nothing so much to think about. And I just want to stretch my legs. Queen e8. So this is a threat to win my queen. And queen e8 is actually kind of clever. I think I'll play queen g5. So pinning the pawn. And black could take. After I take back, I'll be threatening mate. I might want to just put my knight on f6. Get forked. By the g7 pawn. Wow. So Bach does want to take the bishop. I'm going to win on time, most likely. But I'd like to be accurate here. Uh, let's just keep sacking. <laughs> it's probably not the most accurate. It's the most fun looking, though. Now I want to play this and this. Allowing the queen trade. Uh, not quite mating. The final position, I was down two knights for four pawns. I was ready to maybe fork something, but... Okay, good game. That was a, a weird game. <laughs> Welcome back, JJ Dynamite. Welcome back. Any more big OTB tournaments for you this year? Uh, TBD. It is possible I'll be playing like a very strong OTB tournament. Like one of the strongest I've ever played. But it's not confirmed yet. All right, let's berserk. Let's play knight f3. This is an opening that I played a couple times in Switzerland. And at first it's a slightly slower approach, but it's a fun setup. Like e3, b3, and bishop b5. Kind of like a reverse Nimzo or Queen's Indian. Wow. I think it makes sense to take. Generally, black doesn't take with a d pawn. 
So I conceded the bishop pair, but I have a happy bishop. My plan is to play f4 and just make my knight happy and well supported. I'm not still in Germany, but um, I was in Germany a few days ago. Can you can you play London in the next game? Please. Yeah, you don't have to say please to get me to play the London. Sometimes I play it without even being requested. All right, let's go complete ham here. Hi, Eric. Hello. Hope you had a good time in Germany. Couldn't make to Baden-Baden that Sunday because Maybe of the next terrible year. weather. Oh, Maybe no. Maybe we meet some other day. Smile, keep up your good work. Oh, thank you. Olgi. Um, I actually don't know what I want to take with. Maybe queen. That way I defend e3. I'm threatening mate. We might end up trading queens. Yeah, I do hope to return next year. Um, it was my first time playing in the chess tennis world championship. It was so much fun. Like it was super demanding, like physically and mentally. Can I pull a Nezhmedinov? Just sack a queen for a knight? Look at this move though. Sometimes this this would be a reckless decision, but in this position, like how does black defend? Because I'm threatening to take back the pawn and fork. I don't see like an obvious defense for black. Like the queen or king has to move, but I still take it. I'm going to get a massive amount of initiative. So here I take with knight. And now rook f3. I mean, I also have... I think rook f3 is uh, the move. If black tries to sack back the queen, I check first. And then, like, I'm very close to mating. Okay, that uh, allows takes. It's crazy. I, I'm, I only have a knight for the queen. <laughs> But Black's pieces are not really in shape to defend. Okay, that's the move, though. Or is it? Wait, I could take with double check. This might be stronger, though. Yeah, let's start with this. We might repeat King F8. I think it's made in two. Yeah, rookie seven, only legal move. What a finish. That probably wasn't necessary, but I wonder if... I'm actually super curious to check with the engine. Because it would be crazy if this is the best move. Plus two. Engine says it's dubious. Is it still winning, though? Hey, it's still, um, engine's just confused. Engine says it's a draw. <laughs> Minus five or 0. 0.5. Wait, plus point, 1.8. 1. What is this? It says 1.9, but it says zero. After queen f5 is winning. Oh, now it just says... Yeah, this position is too much for the engine to handle. Now it says it's it's winning again. What about queen d8? I think the sacrifice was so strong that even Stockfish has a hard time like, grasping it. But maybe it is somehow a draw. Bishop f6. 
queen d5, rook f3. Maybe a slight edge for white. We need a more powerful engine. That was a fun game, though. It's funny that, like, in the computer graph, it says it's still, like, better for white. Okay. Also, I wanted to note that if, um, if black played g6 here, which is a move I was kind of hoping for, I was going to play knight g4, which is a funny, oh, no, my queen, and then checkmate. It's a cool, uh, cool idea with the fiend cat Okay, so half hour left. I've only played, what, like three games this tournament. Um, yeah, it's the nature of 5-0. So we have a Queen's Gambit main line. Okay, now it's a Queen's Gambit exchange variation. Um... Yeah, queen c2 is actually tricky because h6 there's some tactic like take and take. But now I can play h Oh, oops. Take back? Oh, I can't even offer a take back. <laughs> oh, I'm still getting used to this mouse. Can I even justify h5? That's not the worst move ever. But it's a huge positional concession. And bishop g4. Let's play a5 first. Let's stay flexible. Yeah, I'm not happy with this. At least I'm like developing and just usually I like to chase the bishop away from g5. Thank you, Drew Roman. Oh, welcome to Newt Has a Flute. Not sure if I ever caught a stream before, but happy to be here. Happy to have you here. Yeah, that's a good move. So when I play this move, I'm actually threatening to take on h2 because tactics, and I think I can get away with this. King takes, I play knight here and win the bishop. I mean, white's going to play king h1. And then let's move back. There's probably compensation for white, but that was a nice pawn to win. Queen d7. Play knight d7. Dino dance. That's a nice emote. I still have to be very careful. I think g6 actually makes sense. Now this. White wants to sack. Yeah, maybe g6 wasn't called for. The pin is super annoying. I could play king g7. Some idea of this. Just a scary position. So bishop g6, I take the other bishop. White's still wanting to sack, so let's play this. It looks like white wins a pawn, but if white takes the pawn, I win the queen in the end. The triple pin skewer. I want to play g5, but knight h5 check. F3 is probably coming. Still not simple. F3 is like a really annoying move. No. 
not sure what to do. Hmm. Wow. Really not sure what to do. King F8. I mean, the position might just explode. White's probably going to end up sacking. I want to prepare G5, though. Yeah, I mean, there's so many potential sacks. The good thing is, if white sacks, I take back and the queen can come in and defend. My plan is to probably just bolt for the queen side. Find some new shelter, like a, a crab out of its shell, finding a new shell. I mean, white might take some time here. Already taking time. It does suck. Gotta take it. And now king... Oh, 95's coming. Play this. I couldn't run, because what to do. But 95, I have bishop f7. Queen g6 is now a threat. So I guess I just take, play this position. Got my horsies. Pawns are somehow equal. d4. Might see e4 and f4. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll play this position. So it's two horses and a rook for queen. I'm losing a five, but I'm getting some nice setup. Okay, so queen and two pawns. It's running the pork, the end game pork. Still threatening a pork. The knights are actually really well coordinated. Like they cover so many key squares. Not this square, but other squares. And defend the rook, defend the pawn. Maybe I can push soon. It's hard to actually exploit the king. The rook's also going to cover b7. So I want to play this, take, and pin. I'm just sacking a pawn because it's actually close to mating. After it takes rook g7. So simple though. Oh no. I have this move. Not what I wanted. But there's no more checks with the queen. No more good checks. And I have this move. Man. Position's really awkward.
I have a Rook Knight sandwich. The Queen can't really easily attack the Rook yet. Losing coordination now. Or am I? Oh, that's not mate. But I'm winning, I think. What a game. I know how that happened. Somehow I found coordination, just as I was saying, it felt like I was lacking coordination. Uh, yeah, the king stepped a little bit too far. Probably should have played this move. And then maybe, maybe I was in trouble, but maybe still net f3. Not sure, queen d7. Thank you, QTC. Apparently, the engine says it's equal. I was never, like, completely losing. White was apparently better here and then earlier, too. Oh, except the engine... Maybe the engine's right at knight h5. Okay. Always fun to hey, welcome back, Harkir. Happy 50 months. Um, yeah, I'm trying to win the tournament, so, like, after the tournament, I can chill and maybe analyze some of the, the key moments, but, uh, Berserking, and I'll go for Stafford. Yay. Okay, I don't think I've played a Stafford Gambit today. Stafford Gambit accepted. I'll play this line. More recently, I've been playing knight d5, but this is a more ambitious line. It's also the more dubious line. Bishop e3 is a good move. There's one final trap. If here I can take and attack the things. But so far, white's playing very well. Thank you, Phoenix. All right, let's take with Knight. So I'm down a pawn, but because I'm down a pawn, I have more open lines to work with. It would be a slight mistake if White castles. Knight of three is coming. Bishop e6. So I'm calculating knight of three, queen g4. Hitting g2. And the queen needs to find a better home. In maybe white castles now. If white castles now, I'd play queen h5. Up then knight e5. Maybe queen f5. Wow. It's getting spicy. So bishop f3, I play queen h3. So white's probably casting queen side soon. Take. I probably also castle queen side. Calculating some castle, and then I take on a2. Looks risky, but a pawn is a pawn. Free food. Yeah, why not? Uh, 
<sighs> what would Bobby Fischer do? So in this case of b3, bishop a3, king d2. Okay, I guess we're going into it. So my bishops are a little bit precarious. I do have rook e8. Yeah, the king on d2 is not the happiest king. Okay, I can take on d4 now. Yeah, white defended the knight, but left the pawn undefended. And now, yeah, the position is going to crumble. Wow. Do I have some funny mates? Bishop b4, c5. I want to sack the rook, but I mean, this is a free piece. And yeah, bishop b4 comes soon, maybe. Might be threatening this too. So the thing is, in order to win the tournament, I really need to start winning more games, like, quickly. Also, let's make sure I'm not getting mated. Still have to be really careful. There's rook d5 there. Man, it's really not simple. Have this move. I mean, white's threatening made in one. But I'm also having initiative against the king. Okay, I'll be up two bishops. Soon to be one bishop. I save the bishop. Well, let's not be too fancy. Okay, plenty of time. Okay. I was actually kind of hoping for some funny mates, but okay. Got the job done. So, yeah. Just under 13 minutes left. We have a double berserk. A lot of people playing this d4 move, avoiding the Stafford. I think I have to take. So white has a little bit more space, but I've developed harmoniously, I think. I like my bishop here. Keeps the king safe. Solid piece. Go pawn grabbing. Okay, I grabbed a pawn. E6 is a move. Okay, I want to play D4 and just control more space. A 
allowing white to grab upon. So I'm attacking the bishop if white doesn't care, I guess. We do trade bishops, but now I open the file. C5. Hey, it's Kyojin. Welcome back. And Compact Buffalo. Also, welcome back. Yeah, after the tournament, I'll, I'll try and catch up with chat, address questions, maybe share some photos. I'm liking the position, although it's still tricky. I guess King G8. I mean, the knight can come into one of these squares. F4 might be coming. So white has an outpost on F7. Not defend the pawn. So, like, weirdly annoying position. Again, going pawn grabbing. But the queen has some influence. There, there. I think I just want to push. Mm. Okay, giving in. I have three pawns for the exchange. Rook e2, I guess I defend the bishop. The bishop wants to come to e3. Yeah, this is looking good. Oh no, white's queen. Oh yes, my raid. Chess Dojo Live. Thank you, Chess Dojo. If you're just joining, I'm trying to win this tournament. There's eight minutes left about. I'm two points out of first. Shout out to Chess Dojo. Hope you're on a nice stream. Not sure if that was Kostya, Jesse, David, maybe someone else. So yeah, this player is on a streak as well. I think I'll um I'll have, well, let's let's berserk. So I have to make sure this game counts for the tournament. Okay, this is already a good opening. Yeah, queen e2 looks a little bit weird to block the bishop, but the idea is now the rook has better x-ray vision against the king. Going for h5. I think I'll go for g4. Yeah, typical attacking motif. Don't mind if we trade dark square bishops. That's sometimes the goal with like creating the battery, but um ah, uh, but here takes takes I win e seven. Rookie a queen d6. Queen, maybe queen f4. So I want to play bishop c4. Knight b6 is expected. Okay. 
think of now I'm winning material because Rook's attacked. I forgot about that move though. Take. It's taken. Retreat. Give him a free lesson. Oh yeah, maybe we'll give each other a free lesson. This whole game will be some kind of lesson. Uh, rook h2. Interesting. Always play king b1. Always listen to Ben Feingold. Hmm. You see three? No. I'm down on time. Let's play this. Being safe. Up a pawn. Not a four idea. And d5 could be a target. The knight will be so happy on f4. Hit all the things. Happiness achieved. I mean, these are the main two focal points. Oh. Oh no, my happiness. So I have to play this sack of pawn and then play knight e5. Find some new type of happiness. The queen does defend the rook. This this is probably the last game that counts for the tournament for me. I made a bet with some friends. If you win this tourney, I will cover their lunch. Ooh. Good luck and no pressure. Okay, I feel more pressure now. What do you mean no pressure? You have to give your friends some free lunch. Wow. I have 50 seconds left. Black has knight and pawn for the rook. Play this move first. Idea h5. I'm trying to calculate knight f5, rook g6. Yeah, it doesn't work. A queen a5 ideas. Shift over. My queen moves queen h6. Hmm. That's annoying. Mm. Uh, gone wrong. Yeah, I'm too far away. It's, it's going to be a struggle to even win this game. I might be winning the pawn though, that's a start.
Ah. Oh, what to do? I was not meant to be. Uh, I had my chances earlier in the game. I was probably still... Still slightly better. The black played really well to keep practical chances. Okay, your friends have to buy their own lunches today. Now it's time to catch up with chat and read all the friendly messages. Or the messages that just say L and F. So many unfortunate letters. Well, back to tournament. Congratulations to Cryptonopolis. Oh, it's not over though, <clears throat> but it's over in one second. Okay. Sad confetti. Finished in sixth overall. Hey, I think my rating stayed constant, right? Yeah, because the first game I played in the tournament, <laughs> I was 2601. And I ended on 2601. But that's weird because my performance rating was 2501. So I should have lost points, but not sure how that works. Is there no World Cup today? I wonder how many people are watching the stream, like trying to find World Cup coverage today and then just stumbling upon this. Um, yeah, because usually they promote World Cup coverage on the, the homepage. But there is a rest day for World Cup. Yesterday there were, there were a few tiebreak matches, but... Yeah, World Cup will resume tomorrow with the semifinals. Carlson against Abbasov, Fabiano against Prague. So, um, let me try to catch up. Ah, I see the, the message from TR4MW4J. <laughs> not, not sure how to pronounce that name. Um, yeah, so when I was traveling through Europe, I mean, my schedule is so hectic and I had to put my coursework aside, but I have been like working on a course for the past so many months. And I realized that it's taking a lot more work than initially expected, but um, I'm hoping to at least have like a sample to offer for free soon. And yeah, once once things are ready, there will be. Um, I mean, I'll I'll be promoting it, but we do have the newsletter. Like, I do have an email list, which maybe some people are not aware of. That when I do have announcements, you can you can get notified via email. Hey, I see the the chat from Bossom. Just started learning chess. I love your Ponziani videos on YouTube. That's nice to hear. I see different people rooting for different chess players in World Cup. If I had to root for a player, I'd probably be rooting for Fabiano. Um, I'm, I'm happy that he made candidates. Because I think like coming into this tournament, there is still not a guarantee he would qualify for candidates. Like, even if you're top five in the world, there's not much of a guarantee. Oh, yeah, the newsletter, it's not like sent. I don't really email people too often. But when I do, it's, uh, it's usually just announcing my upcoming plans or tournaments or new merch, new products. How was the chess tennis? It was fun. It was two days of intensive chess and tennis. I finished in, actually, I have a trophy. Maybe I, let me let me share the trophy. Um, I can share photos too, but I should share the physical award that I received. So here's a trophy that I won. It was a little bit heavy. It was a little bit like tricky to travel with. I just put in my suitcase and hope it survives the journey. But yeah, this is, let's see. 
Uh, people can read that. It says third or three plots, which I think is third place. Even though I kind of tied for third and fourth, I got knocked out in the semifinals. And there wasn't a match for third and fourth place, but I got the third place trophy, maybe on tie breaks. I feel like there is a, a missed opportunity to like be more creative with the trophy, maybe have some kind of like king next to a tennis ball, maybe for future editions, some trophy makers out there that can go wild. I've never played Esserman in tennis. I imagine Esserman would have a very good shot at like winning the, the chess tennis world championship if he competed. Can you tell me more about the, the tennis? Um, yeah, uh, I posted, there, there's a video on my extra channel of some, some like highlights from my training for at least a tennis portion. But tennis is one of my, one of my passions in addition to chess. So there's a video on my extra channel, which is this, and it has some, some highlights. I think this is one of the best points. Yeah. Wait for it. Wait for it. This is my favorite shot is a tweener where it looks like you're about to lose, but then you, you pull a trick shot. So I recorded all my matches from the chess and tennis portion of the event that it's going to be a lot to like edit, but, um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it can like turn into a interesting video. Yeah, we played on clay courts, um, which I'm not really used to like in the U S it's almost all hard courts. So. Thankfully in Switzerland, I, um, I found someone to play with and we played a lot on clay. I ended up getting new tennis shoes that worked well on clay. Do you analyze your tennis matches? Yeah, I run them through Stockfish and it, it tells me everywhere I blunder. Have to improve on my weaknesses. Well, there's a huge mental and strategic component to tennis in addition to the physical component. What's your tennis ELO? Tennis has a different rating system. So it's not like chess where it ranges from like a hundred to like the high two thousands. Um, in the U S it's what, like. Well, there's UTR, but there's also like USTA ranking. I'm probably like between a 3.5 and 4, according to USTA. Or N, I don't know the acronym, NTRP. Or as a fellow, uh, fellow streamer friend, Katie Learns, who was also competing in the event. He, he was actually live streaming like all the matches. Um, and he's very good at tennis. He's probably closer to a five. Will chess stream continue? We can do more chess. Should I do, do some puzzle streak? Oh dear. Oh, I'm already on a streak. Oh, wow. So I'll leave this as a puzzle. Like we'll, we'll be a bit more chill. Um, I do have to wrap things up very soon. You look very fit in the video. I saw your tennis against GM a year ago and you seem fitter now. Yeah, um, I have made some change in my life. I haven't talked about this too much, but starting back, I think it was the end of April, I've, um, I've had a daily goal. It's a very simple goal, but it's made a huge impact of walking 10,000 steps a day. And I have this app, it's like, um, it's a, a pedometer app. It, it tracks my, my steps every day. 
getting keyed out because of the, the green screen. But I'm on a, a 116 day streak of walking 10,000 steps. And that's helped with just general energy and stamina. Will the tournament go on YouTube? At the very least, it will go on the extra channel. Maybe the main channel. Bishop F7. Yeah, Bishop F7 seems like the only move here. <laughs> Otherwise, we lose a bishop. I imagine Bishop F7, Rook G7, and then... It seems like it should be a pretty straightforward win. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Jimberwood. Happy 33. What's your walking Evo? Walking isn't really a competitive endeavor. It's more of just a daily thing I do to not be a potato. Okay. Um, Bishop F7, only move. Positions like this, you can play the move and then calculate later. And this is where it probably gets tricky because we have all these king moves. And I'm wondering if there's some like weird opposition thing that we have to acknowledge. And king c2 is definitely the most logical. Thank you, XLS. Oh, it's Mattern Monkey. Hey. <laughs> Mattern Monkey is like a known individual in uh, the chess chest twitch space also streamed for a bit has some relation to the chess bras not sure if he's like a cousin or um maybe stepson somehow related um okay king c2 F, uh, King C2, I was about to say F5, but okay, the C4. So, okay, let me actually, uh, let's, let's take some time here and let's focus. So King C2, black can either try C4 or just wait with a king. The rook's completely stuck. So I assume the goal is to get some Zugzwang position. Um, let's start by looking at C4 because takes... King c5, king b3. If ever d3, we just win the pawn. And if ever it takes, we push the pawn. So c4, take king. Wait, okay. King c2, c4. I'm drawing my arrows too fast. King c2, c4. Take king c5, king b3. King d6, king b4. And we're still staying within range of the pawn. So if push here. We're fine. If king moves back, we play c5. And I assume we should be winning that. Because we're going to get the... Let's say king on c4. We probably want to play d6 at some point. d6, king, c6. I'm just going to make the judgment that's winning. So what if king c2, the king moves this way? And we're still getting into c4. I guess the problem is black can wait. And when we play king c4, king d wait a minute. King c2, let's say king d7. King b3, king c7. So this is how black waits. And then if we play this, I think it's just winning. Because at king d6, we play king b5. At king b6, we push the pawn, get to d7, take, take. And then our king's going to eventually win the e pawn. Oh, do we have to look at Rook F7? I don't think we do. Hmm. Wait a minute. King C2, C4. King C2, 
King c2, c4 we take. Just realizing there's some like rook f7 take here. But then our c pawn will just start sprinting. Let's play king c2. Yeah, we have to take. We can't allow c3. Okay. <laughs> I'm a little bit confused. So why why is not king d why is king d2 not winning? Ah, because then if we lose a tempo, then black can sack. And then it's just in time to play c4. Okay. So the timing is actually kind of important. Hey, you got to 64. Yeah, this looks good for white because we have two connected pass pawns. But it's a draw because, let's say, push here. Um, our king can't really go up to the fifth rank without allowing the d-pawn to promote. And there's no way to make progress for white. I see the question from Jimberwood. What happened to the person I did a collab with? Are you referring to Lafong? I'm actually going to be playing a game against Lafong coming up. Um, he, he messaged me yesterday. He's approaching 20,000 games on WeChess. And he wants to play me for his 20,000th game. And the funny thing is, my 20,000th game on WeChess, I played against him. This was like a few years ago. Okay, I'm over 33,000 games now. Anyway, I do have to go. Um, yeah, I have like a meeting coming up. Things to do today, food to eat, air to breathe. But thanks everyone for being here. It was a fun stream. Played two tournaments. I lost some rating points, but I learned some lessons. Especially against this person who gave me a free lesson. Oh, did I show? I, I didn't show any photos. I was going to share a cow photo if I won the tournament. But I didn't win the tournament. I didn't even play the cow. Should I still share a, a cow photo? What do people want to see? Cow, my food in Germany, or my drink in Germany, or the chessboard in Germany? Cow, cow, cow. Utterly excited for the cow. Okay. I took a lot of cow photos. But my favorite cow photo was this one. This is in the Dolomites in northern Italy. Oops. The cow wanted to lick my phone for some reason. And I was using like this wide angle lens on my phone. And yeah. <laughs> Um, there will be more cow photos to come. I do regret not bringing a chessboard. Because I, I really wish I had a chessboard to like set up and then play the cow opening against the cow. But next time. No, I did not let the cow lick the phone. The tongue got close, but I always moved it back far enough so it, it couldn't reach. But it had a surprisingly long tongue. Like you would not expect such a long tongue for a cow. It's maybe like a lizard cow or something. Anyway, it's time to wrap things up. And let's send a raid to the one and only Jesse February. Oh, it's her first stream from her new place. Yeah, Jesse is, um, I believe, in South Africa, so slightly far away. How to raid. Oh, yeah, if you're new to Twitch, when usually when the streamer ends their stream, they just send all their viewers to another stream that's live. 
it's a nice way to like cross promote share some love so do do give jesse some energy uh thanks again everyone for watching and i'll be back in the future adios